Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to this energy update video for September 2023. My name is Ona Christie, visionary artist and mystic oracle. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing energetic insights into the energies of September 2023, what to expect, how we can prepare. And I'll be sharing some spirit animal wisdom to help us through this month, as well as some of the astrology of September 2023. And I will be drawing a card from a brand new Oracle deck that is coming out this month um, to support us through this uh, uh, month to come. Okay, so let's start with the spirit animal for September 2023. And when I tuned in and asked for spirit animal guidance for this month, the animal that came forward was moose. When I asked first for a message, a moose was really, really clear. He said, paint me first. And I will be writing up a full article with a message from Moose on the Edge magazine this month. Um, I'll be posting that when it goes live, so watch for that. But in the meantime, there was so much that came through just the painting that I want to share with you because I feel like it really sums up a lot of the energies that we're working with here in uh, September 2023. Okay, so the first thing that really came forward was this really deep red color um, that you see in the background here. And uh, so Moose has a number of very specific characteristics that have spiritual meaning to them if you look into them. It was definitely a bull moose that came forward with the big antlers. And this is actually the start of the rutting season for moose. Okay, so um, we're looking at this very strong masculine energy and it's it's not an energy that backs down, right? So Moose has a couple of different defensive strategies. One, of course, is to run. But then we've also got, um, especially the bull moose, will stand and fight or even charge, right? You've probably heard the saying, the best offense is a good defense. Well, moose kind of flips that around because uh, sometimes the best defense is a good offense. But we don't want to do that indiscriminately, right? Because it would be sort of like a bull in the china shop, <laughs> right? We can use that energy in positive ways or destructive ways. And we want to make sure that we're channeling that kind of energy in a positive way. So what else can we look at Moose to kind of figure out what's going on here and how to use these energies positively? Um, first of all, We've got these this big rack of antlers, right? And it's um, they're different. Of course, moose is the biggest member of the deer family. And these are different antlers from any other deer. Um, they've got this kind of palmate structure that's really wide and broad. And it reminds me of hands, right? Um, the, the, the kind of receiving hands. So like all deer have this kind of receiving energy through the crown. Um, but moose especially, it's it, it feels to me like this really powerful energy of receiving, almost receiving a blessing. You think of the energy that flows through hands, um, that is part of that moose energy. So really, really strong, receptive crown energy. Even though it is a male moose, we still have that sense of reception. So right away, I'm getting like this balance of masculine and feminine in, in, in its positive aspect of this animal. It was recently called to my attention that um, the astral body of a person is going to be opposite to their their actual physical gender, right? So if you are a woman, your astral body is going to be more masculine. And if you are a male, your astral body is going to be more feminine. So and, and when we have those in balance, it, it's it's a beautiful balance of this um you know, the, the genders within one person and Moose it kind of really embodies that. So we're looking at balance here, which is no coincidence coming up in September because we're, later on we're in the month we're going to be moving, the sun will be moving into the sign of Libra, which of course is the sign of balance. We've got the equinox showing up 
appear later in the month and we'll get into more of the astrology of this later okay so this receiving of spiritual in initiations and spiritual guidance through the crown chakra um this, this is something that is going to be very accessible this month if you're able to slow down and receive it okay um so moose tells us that that's an option you can slow down too and put your head down and really case the situation out um, and stand your ground right okay so we've got that rack going on we've also got the water okay so moose is a very i think of it as a very earth and water element animal um if you're into ayurveda this would be the the kapha dosha um right lots of affinity for the element of water okay so water really represents the emotional body the intuition again that more feminine consciousness and moose will feed in the water a lot of the time okay and they're also very discerning a moose can't eat rough food like hay like most most animals of their kind they have to have the more tender okay so they have to they're a little bit more refined animal in terms of their digestion so moose is really saying be careful what you ingest this month um and again that that really fits with that virgo energy that we're you know that we're in in this month um for for most of the month we're in virgo before we go into Ligo, libra virgo has a lot to do with hygiene and with you know being discerning and um looking out for your health and i feel like moose is talking about not just the physical health of what you're ingesting although that can play a role but also the mental health and your spiritual vibration watch the vibes right watch what you're ingesting whether it is on television in the movies um what you're reading what you're seeing what you're drawing into yourself um maybe also what you're putting into skin but the the emotional the emotional um environment that you're in is going to really be um something that that you want to be really watching for this month and discerning okay is this vibe healthy for me is this something that is going to support me or is it something that's actually going to degrade me even to the point of you know my not even being able to function okay so really watch your environment and what you're taking into your soul and you know through your eyes through all your senses this month um related to the water is uh, the moose has special nostrils that it can actually close up so that it can forage underwater they can actually do a really deep dives many many feet underwater to um, find the plants that are good for them so i'm looking at going within taking some time this month to really do some introspection and especially looking at your foundations we're looking at this red color the color of the root chakra and it's also the color of blood and of war and of action right so we've got these two things going on you know the really active quality which can be this kind of this moose energy of being very offensive or um, charging even but it can also refer to that groundedness the root chakra okay and i'm looking especially the message that's coming through really strong is to examine your foundations okay um the nose coming back to the nose this ability to close the 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 nostrils it's breath control right it's controlling the breath breath is life breath is the prana that moves through and taking the time to uh, work with the breath and to control the breath remember it's always what they tell you to do if you're in a situation where you're really emotionally fired up is 
take a deep breath, right? Or take three breaths. So breath is something that might be a really, really positive thing to work with this month, especially if you are feeling fired up, right? If something's got you seeing red and I feel like that is not an unusual thing to be happening right now. There's all these issues coming up, things that are being revealed in the, um, the news and the social media and so forth that have the emotional body all riled up, okay, and have people seeing red, okay? So Moose is coming up to just ask us to start to address some of our feelings and emotions around this and to discern where we're at and are you being called to take a stand for something, okay? Now, Remember that moose has really positive aspects, but like every animal, it's got a shadow side. And uh, so the shadow side of moose is kind of being addle brained and they're very vulnerable to parasites. Um, around here in upper Michigan, sometimes the moose get brain worm. And so that's telling me really watch, okay, what's happening with the spiritual alignment, okay? And especially we're looking at, um, you know, this is a really good month to examine. Go within and really look at your foundations, especially your spiritual foundations. Okay, so we're, we're going to touch back onto this in a little bit. But first, let's, let's look at the astrology of the month. Because every single point, as I was looking up at the astrology and what planets are doing, what they all refer back to this, okay? Okay, so... In addition to the equinox, um, which I'm going to create another video for that. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and um, watch for that equinox video. Um, but going through the month, first thing that I'm looking at is Jupiter, the planet Jupiter going retrograde in Taurus on September 4th. Jupiter is a planet of expansion and of good fortune. It represents power, authority, and strength. And Jupiter is associated with higher learning, with wisdom and knowledge and spirituality. And uh, remember the, the goddess Athena, which is the goddess of wisdom springing from the head of Zeus, which is the Greek name for Jupiter. And interestingly, there's something happening with Athena, which I'll get into in just a little bit. Okay, also this month astrologically. Okay, so Jupiter is all about spirituality, wisdom, higher learning. He rules the weather as well, but also government, welfare, and the laws. Okay, um, Jupiter going retrograde in Taurus uh, um, is really interesting. Now, Taurus is the bull, right? So we've still got this bull energy again, Um Taurus is an earth sign. It rules material wealth, beauty, and money. It's a fixed sign. It's really concerned with stability and, again, building the solid foundation, okay? So when I saw all the red and the bull um, and was getting this feeling about foundations, this is really being um, confirmed here with this Jupiter in retrograde. So the Jupiter planet of expansion going into retrograde, it's, it's looking at, okay, let's look at some introspection, examining your foundations here, and especially around what's solid spiritually. What are your spiritual foundations? Are your spiritual beliefs built upon truth? Or if you dig down as to why do I believe what I believe? If you dig down there, can you find actual reasons or is there confusion? Okay. Um, so in the new age, especially if you're newly awakening, we have all these experiences. We have a spiritual experience, but, but it's like, we don't, a lot of us don't even know why, right? Or we come to, we hear certain things and we take it as truth. But when you really dig down into it, if you are finding that you don't know why you have a belief, then it's time to dig deeper, okay? And make sure that your spiritual understanding is clear. And if you don't have clarity in your spiritual understanding, that is a big wide opening for 
something to get in and to lead you in a direction that is not going to be karmically very kind to you, okay? Um, and it, it, sometimes you don't recognize this until way down, you've gone down the, a path that is not of your best interest. Um, so it's this is a really, really good time to, you know, start asking those questions. Why do I have this belief? If I've had this experience, what can it mean and why? And and where is the spiritual law that upholds you know what's being told to me? Um, ask a little deeper. Don't just take things at face value. OK, um, if you belong to a wisdom tradition, start looking at some of the prophecies or the, the the teachings right that are given to you and if you're not um, part of any particular wisdom tradition maybe start looking into a few and start you know examining what are the teachings in different ones and I feel like it's when you start um, cross-referencing different spiritual traditions and when you see the same basic idea showing up in multiple different traditions, that's when you know that there's a very strong current of truth right there that you're working with, okay? Um, all right, so we've got Jupiter retrograde, going retrograde in Taurus on September 4th. Um, we've also got a new moon on September 14th, 14th or 15th in Virgo, okay? So new moon is gonna be new beginnings, and Virgo has a lot to do with like healthy discrimination. So again, we're going back to, you know, what's healthy for you, um, choosing those things that are going to be supporting you energetically, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, okay? Virgo also has a lot to do with organization, getting ready for action, clearing out what needs to be cleared out, but really organizing and discerning, okay? What's, what's going to be useful here? Um, right around the new moon, we have Mercury going direct. Mercury's been in retrograde. Mercury goes direct in Virgo. Again, um, a sign of planning and organization. Mercury rules communication. So it feels like it, it could be a really good month starting at about the middle of the month for any kind of like planning, uh, planning ahead, um, business planning, anything like that. A great time to, you know, kind of get yourself back in order. Um, but watch for being overly critical in your communication. Um, Mercury and Virgo. Virgo can really call, tell it like it is, but we want to stay in our heart when we do that. Um, so Virgo is a sign of the Virgin, calling on the Virgin Mary. It might be a really good one if you feel like it might be a challenge for you to um, speak you know, truthfully and, but also stay in the heart, right? So um, that Mother Mary energy can help you stay in the heart, but still hold that truth, um, you know, within your field. Okay, and one more thing right about the middle of the month, um, the asteroid palace uh, enters Libra, okay? And the reason I'm finding this really significant is what we're dealing with that Jupiter retrograde, which is asking us to move into accessing our wisdom, into diving deep into the intuition, right, um, to, to find that wisdom. Um, and this is a quote from astrology.com um, about this um, asteroid palace, okay, which is connected with the goddess Athena. So Athena demonstrates the ability to think for oneself, as well as the internal balance of active and receptive energies, right, when head and heart combine. Uh, Athena's movement provokes us to examine our beliefs and balance polarities of thought to include information and logic aligned with intuition or wisdom itself. Okay, again, it's that masculine feminine balance there. Okay, Pallas's gifts allow us to notice patterns and larger pictures helpful for creativity and problem solving. Okay, and Pallas 
entering Libra. Libra is all about balance, partnership, and harmony. Okay, it's the point in the zodiac also. This is really important. Um, Libra is the point of the zodiac that we're moving from more a focus on um, the one it, oneself as an individual towards serving the needs of the collective, right? So I feel like collectively, this is a point that we're really at right now is that um, there's a critical mass of us who have really been working to find our sovereign truth, to to embody our Christ essence, you know, to a, to a, a greater extent, right? And once you get a, 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 a certain distance along that path, the emphasis becomes less on, okay, well, it, you know, it's all about me and, you know, discovering my purpose and, and you know, all this stuff. And, and then it becomes more about life as an act of service. Okay, and it feels like there may be a, a certain contingent of people who are moving in a big way. Um, and I'm talking about awakening people, right? Um, I feel like there's a, a group of us who are, you know, have come far enough along in the awakening process to where it is less about uh, discovering oneself and more about really stepping into service in a big way. But again, whether you're working on the self-discovery aspect, the earlier portions of awakening, or if you are really have found more your purpose and are stepping into that service, this is the month to really, again, um, examine your foundations and make sure that you are building upon a foundation of truth. Okay, because there are a lot of false narratives out there. And one way to really discern, you know, am I working with a false narrative? I, I would examine the narratives that are out there very prevalent, prevalently in social media right now and examine your emotional reactions when you read about or hear about things related to these narratives, okay? And you know what those narratives are, you cannot avoid them. Um, and so when you find that there's something that really you feel triggered when you hear about a particular narrative, um, or if there's something that you are feeling almost militant about, okay? That is something that you're going to want to really delve into, okay? And if you find that you were, your beliefs are completely in lockstep with one of these narratives, and this could be on either side of the political spectrum, it could be on any, any side of the, the social spectrum, but if you find that you're 100% agreeing with a narrative that's out there, that's the time to start to really dig down, right? And find the sacred cows. <laughs> we all have sacred cows, right? And sometimes those sacred cows are sacred for a reason because there's actual sacred truth behind it. Sometimes they are false idols that need to be tipped. <laughs> okay, so this is the challenge. Watch for your emotional strong feelings and follow those, okay? And then ask why, why you have those feelings and start looking at, well, what's the spiritual truth? What are the traditional teachings um, about that? Open yourself up and to start looking at it from all angles, not just the position that you are used to taking, but start looking at, well, what are the counter arguments? Look at, you know, what your quote unquote enemies are saying about this issue with an open mind first, right? And so that you can start seeing from other perspectives. And only then after you've really looked at it from all perspectives, come back and ask yourself, well, you know, has my perception changed at all? And if so, why? 
or maybe it has solidified your feeling and that's fine too, but you want to make sure that you're standing on really solid ground before you move forward, okay? Because the last astrological uh, event that I want to bring forward here in this month is the full moon in um, coming on September 29th, and that is in the sign of Aries. Okay, so Aries is ruled by Mars, the planet of war. It's a cardinal sign of fiery and ready for action. So the full moon is this time for releasing what's ready to be released. It's also a time of coming full circle, right? Um, it can be a time of incredible creativity, um, manifestation, but it's also reaping of karma from the previous cycle, okay? Um, so Aries rules the head. Think about being headstrong or think about your moose kind of putting his head down and standing his ground. Uh, this is what we're going to be asked to do uh, at near the end of this month of September 2023 is either stand our ground, right, and uh, stand up for something, whatever's worth standing up for. We may be asked to do that. We may be asked to fight, right, for, you know, what we feel is right. Um, but we also may be moving into a, a period of really intense creativity or, um, you know, getting things done, and to, especially towards the end of this month after this whole mid-month um, transition. Remember, remember that, um, you know, the, the equinox is a tipping point. And so it feels like right after that tipping point, we're going to see a lot of energetic movement or um, or at least it could be movement or it could be a headbutting kind of thing going on at the end of the month or triggered at the end of the month. Okay. Um, so again, the full moon in Aries can encourage you to challenge your deep seated beliefs, um, but the encouragement is to keep your head, right? All right, so if you're ready to tip some sacred cows, this is the time, whether those are your own internal sacred cows or sacred cows in the greater collective that need to start to be tipped. Okay, so finally, I'm going to pull a card here to support us in this month of September. Very could be a very intense month in a way, although it feels like it's going to be more intense internally this month, um, getting ready for maybe some greater intensity afterwards. But um, the deck that I'm using is the B Sisterhood Oracle deck. This is a brand new deck that um, will be coming out this month. I will put a link below. Um, it may not be quite out yet. We're working on a Kickstarter, um, you know, when this video is being launched, but I'll put a link to, to learn more and to sign up for more information on it. Um, it's all about bee medicine. Um, it's got 48 cards, beautiful deck. And this card coming forward is the sun card. Okay, which is if you're into tarot, it's going to be very similar to that. The sun is the giver of life. Okay, and I feel like it's a reminder at this time to really hold ourselves in the light every day. Okay, be a sun worshiper this month. Okay, because that is going to illuminate your path. It's going to give you those, um, you know, sacred uh, guidances that are really um, coming from a beautiful place, coming from your higher self, right? The sun symbolizes the higher self, the Christ essence, right? The life force that we're working with. And um, you can see this little bee is just holding up its little, you know, little hands. And it feels like it's giving thanks to the sun, and, um, you know, just really accepting and receiving the sun's blessings. So I'm wishing you all the best for this month, wishing you lots and lots of beautiful light. And remember, you were born to be free.